Hello my YouTube friends, welcome to this lesson in Revit Structure. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you on how you can model a kept beam, that is a concrete beam, how you can add the top ribber, the bottom ribber, and also the sidebars, and most importantly, the stirrups on your kept beam. Now, you are not going to, you can't use the standard, you know, tools in Revit. I'll show you the tools that you're supposed to use to place the ribber on the kept beam. Now, if you like what I'm doing, what I'm doing on this channel, please make sure that you like my videos, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell notification. And most importantly, check my website, skillmaxcard.com, where I've developed some detailed courses in Revit architecture, robot structure analysis, and much, much more. All right, so we'll get started in this lesson. And what I'm going to do is to start from scratch. I'll just go to level two. All right. So now we'll start by the modeling of the concrete beam, which is a curved one. So all you need to do is to go to structure right here, then click on the beam. Once you click on the beam, go to the properties and pick a concrete beam. All right. So we have concrete beam. We have two beam types here. You can choose any one or you can even resize it. But I'm just going to pick a 300 by 600 from there. All right. Now, once you do that, you just need to come to the draw ribbon here. We have several options to create your concrete beam. So the first one is for a straight beam, the second one, and these others, you can create a curved beam. I'll use the second option. I'll click on it right here. Right now, with this option, just need to click the first point and the second point and specify the radius for your beam. So I'll click the first point here and drag it and click the second point. Now I can specify the radius by watching the dimension or I can simply type maybe 2,500 millimeters and enter on my keyboard. Right, I'll escape and see that I have my curved beam right there, all right. So now let me go to my 3D view. You see that that is the beam that I've created. And now let me select this one and simply delete it. Right, so I'll orbit like this so that we can get started with the placement of the enforcement. Now I'll start placing the stirrups here. Now to do that, as I've already mentioned, don't cut a section, it will not work for your curved beam. Work in 3D and once we're in 3D, just select on the beam and now select on ribber. Okay, I can just click OK on that one. And once you do that, make sure that you go to the properties. You want to start with the stirrups here. So to start with the stirrups, make sure that you are on freeform ribber and pick the aligned, all right? For the free for the for the stirrups, make sure that you pick aligned. Now come here and pick the bar type. I'll use H8. Now go to workshop instructions. For this one, we want to pick bend. Then the bar alignment, we want to pick aligned to path. Okay. Then the style, click on it and pick the stirrup, stroke the tie. Right. Then this other option is for the cover. We are going to pick interior, interior face of cover reference. So I'll select on that option. Now make sure that you also specify the hooks. Start of the bar. This is where I specify the hooks. I'll pick the hook there and pick the hook type. We want to use the 135 degree. Then go to the end of the bar, select on it, change it from none to hook. And the hook at end, what kind of hook? We want to pick a 135. All right. Okay, we are done with the properties here. Now make sure that you also check the layout through here. Click that option and make sure that maximum spacing is selected. You can use these other options if you want, but maximum spacing is ideal in my case. And change the spacing to what you want. I think 200 millimeters for me is okay. Now, just watch out for the case there. You see that it says select host, host surface. Now, the stirrup wraps around the, the beam there. So, I need to select all the faces, all right? So, except the edges here. So, I can pick this one, orbit, pick the top. Or if I don't want to be orbiting, I can simply select like that, select all the faces like that, except for the edges, as you can see from here. So once you do that, make sure that you click on space bar. You see that the case that changes to select path. So now you can pick any edge except again for this one here because the stirrup has to go all the way along the length of the beam. So I'll pick this one. And now you see that we have the green tick mark there. Make sure that you click on it. Escape. 
from your keyboard you see that you have the stirrups right there with the hooks with the 135 degree hooks all right now let's proceed with the longitudinal bars so again you just need to select on the beam select on the ribber go to the properties change this one maybe i want to use h16 now go to workshop instructions i want to keep it straight the bar alignment i want to keep it aligned to path is fine for me the style i will leave it at standard it's not a stir up then start of the bar now if i want to have the hooks at the end there i can change this one to hook and now i want to change it to 90 degrees then end of the bar i want to change it to hook and the hook has to be 90 degrees so i'm done with the properties here now make sure don't forget remember we are dealing with aligned for the stair up but for the longitudinal bars make sure that you are on freeform ribbar that's fine but make sure that you pick on surface okay so make sure that you just counter check the settings so that nothing should change here so start of the bar 90 degrees end of bar 90 degrees okay keep straight standard so everything is okay here now i'm on free form and the surface very very important for the longitudinal bars then go to the layout tool and now change to i think i want to have just a fixed number and i want to have three bars on top three bars at the bottom later on i also add the side bars which will just be the two bars all right so now you can see from the case it says select host surface so i'll start with the top so i'll pick the top there then space bar okay it changes to select start surface all right so for the start surface you need to pick this surface here so the bars will start from this surface then space bar it will change to select end surface space bar so it says select end surface i can orbit and pick this one here make sure that you pick this edge and select on it now you have a green check mark and click on finish so as you can see we have the bar at the top there with the hooks now you can see that there's a collision there i just need to fix this by using the edit constraints so what you need to do first of all let me just escape here select on the bar okay so we need to drop this bar down there we also need to move uh this bar inside and also this bar inside by using the edit constraints very very important so i'll select on the bar here and click on edit constraints now you see that we have these options here so if i put the kesa there it says host surface so from the top there i have to drop that bar so i'll select on it then i'll click that number there and i'll drop it by negative eight because i don't want it to collide there click inside you see that it drops then i'll go to this one start surface i'll select that one here you see that it now shifts to this one and then i'll click that number and i also want to move this one by negative eight negative eight there click outside you see that it moves inside then i'll move to this other one here you say you see that it says end surface click on it so that i can be able to modify this one select on it negative eight and click outside so you can see that now there are no collisions here then click on finish and you can move it further if there are still more collisions some collisions there as you can see maybe let me do it once again select on it quickly i'll edit it and make sure that i'm on this one maybe negative 12 negative 12 is up to you make sure that you don't have collisions i think now it looks good i can click on finish and we are done with the top you know reinforcement there now for the bottom one you don't have to start creating you just need to propagate so to do that just click on that top bar there then click on that small arrow and click on propagate now within propagate make sure that you use aligned by face i'll select on it now check on the case you see that it says select source face so the source face is this one on top then it changes to select destination face now my destination face is at the bottom so select on it and you can see that it's there no collisions 
because you already set it up on top with the hooks as you can see from here then click on finish all right it looks good okay now let me also add the and before i add the sidebars let me also fix the edges here i want my stirrups to go inside a bit maybe up to there so again it's just using edit constraints select on on the stirrup there then click on edit constraint now you just need to make sure that you you select let me zoom in here you see that we have a number of dots you can hover your cursor there that is the start you don't want to deal with the start the other one is the start of bar the other one is the end of bar what about this this is the start of the path or oh, actually the start of the path this is the one that i want the other two is for this end of the bar and that end of the bar but the start of the path it's this one going in that other direction so that's what i need to change okay so i'll just click on it you can see that the plane also moves to this side now my viewers again i just want to encourage you to keep on subscribing so that i keep on bringing more and more lessons in details because you know very few people explain such details as in regards to edit constraints as i'm just explaining here okay so continue so as you can see from here now it has picked this face now i can select this one and now maybe i want to move it by 50 inside so I'll type negative 50 and enter you see that it goes inside like that cool click on finish so we have avoided that now i can also do the same on the other one okay i'll do it quickly i'll select on it edit constraints now make sure that you counter check it i'll move my cursor there end of path that's the one i want to deal with select on it then negative 50 enter and finish so we have dealt with that now let's quickly add the sidebars now the sidebars of course according to your code depending on the depth of the beam sometimes you want to add the sidebars so you can do it even on the curved beam so it's what i want to show you i'll select on this beam then go to the river okay i'll make sure that i'm on free form and also surface all right now make sure that you counter check here keep straight standard start of the bar i don't have i don't want a hook end of the bar no hook now i'll go there and i just want to have maybe two bars fixed number and i just want to have two bars right there now it says select host surface i'll pick this surface okay i'll pick this surface here i'll select on it then space bar then it to say select start surface so now you need to pick the top one here select on it and space bar select end surface you just need to go at the bottom here all right you see that it to highlight in blue make sure that is correct select on it once the steps are done you notice that now you have the green check mark you just click on it now let me check what i've just done you can see that we have one bar at the top closer there at the top and one at the bottom we just need to play with the edit constraints here you can see that those are the two bars just need to move this bar down and this one up then we are done for this one so i've selected the bars then click on edit constraints now i'll need to move my cursor there this is the start surface so i'll select on it then i'll select on this one maybe negative let me say negative 50 click outside okay maybe negative 100 click there okay i'll leave it at negative 100 then i'll go to this one i'll select on it okay also maybe negative 100 okay that's okay now let me change these bars to maybe three bars so i'll just click on finish there then i can even change from here quantities to then the bars the bar is selected i'll change it to three move in my case I click outside you see that i have the three bars there now again you can see that we have those collisions there okay now if you want to create a constructible model you have to make sure that all those collisions are resolved okay but for the sake of quantifying detailing and everything you may leave it but i like making sure that 
you know there are no collisions so i'll select on that and click on edit constraints now i need to counter check which one is this that dot is host surface that's the correct one i'll select on it then i want to move in by negative eight click outside you see that it goes in and click on finish and that one is resolved perfect now again i don't need to create this one on the other side all i need to do is propagate so i'll select on it i'll click on propagate ribbon align by face select the source face which is this one okay i'll select on it it changes to select destination face i'll orbit this side by holding the wheel and the shift on my mouse this is my destination and you see that we have the bars in the preview there then click on finish click outside and you can see that my bars are there and this is how you can model your bars on a curved beam so thank you very much for watching don't forget to like my video subscribe and turn on the bell notification see you in some more tutorials